Section 7 of the Indian Storybook The Indian Storybook by Richard Wilson Story 1, Rama's Quest Part 13 In a low-roofed cave, the entrance to which was almost hidden by flowering creepers, lay Sita, fast asleep with her head upon her arm. She had heard from afar the distant sounds of the contending forces, but there was none to tell her of the result of the fight, for the guardians of her captivity had left her. At last, wearied but not altogether unhappy, she had sunk into a restful slumber. She was roused from pleasant dreaming by a feeling that she was not alone, and, opening her eyes, saw the sun of the wind standing near her couch. Pearl of living creatures, she cried, thou hast news of my lord. Then, overwrought with fear and watching, she burst into tears. Weep not, my princess, said the kindly creature. Rama is victorious. Ravana is dead. And my lord is here, she cried, clasping her hands to her breast, and I shall see my lord. He will send at sunrise, said Hanuman, for the battlefield is dark with blood and no fit spectacle for the eyes of a tender princess. At sunrise he will send, she said half to herself, again and again looking at the kindly monkey before her, whose ugliness seemed transformed by the unselfish service he had rendered to the cause of right and virtue. But his nature was unchanged, and he begged permission from the princess to enter Lanka and avenge her still further upon its inhabitants. Sita clapped her hands and broke into merry laughter. Trouble them not, poor things, she said gently. I have no desire that any creature, great or small, should be in trouble and grief any longer. It seemed a long time waiting for the dawn, but Sita's love for Rama was so steadfast that she did not pause to wonder why her lord had not hastened at once to meet her. When morning dawned, a messenger came to the cave, bringing rich clothing, jewels, and perfumes. Array yourself, he said, in a manner fitting to your rank and destiny. With fingers trembling with happy eagerness, the princess dressed and adorned herself and stepped into a gorgeous palanquin. In a few moments she was brought into the centre of the waiting army, and, hidden behind the rich curtains of a litter, heard at last the voice of Rama giving directions to his attendants. But it sounded cold, distant, and strange to her. And, when she stepped from her palanquin, radiant in youthful beauty, and ran with faltering feet to meet her lord and master, she was dismayed to find his face full of offended dignity and his eyes averted from her. Am I not worn and weary with search and combat? and she comes to me radiant with the freshness of untired youth. Not one line of care shows upon her brow, no sign of having missed my tender guardianship. Then the laughing Lakshmana was very angry. See, brother, he said, there stands your bride with lustrous eyes imploring you. Have you no greeting for the gentle Sita? But the demon of jealousy had taken possession of Rama's heart, and for a time at least his nobility of soul was clouded by the evil influence. If Sita's sorrow had left so few traces upon her beauty, he argued, torturing his own soul without reason, then at heart she must have been willing enough to be parted from him. Alas, she cried at last, turning in despair to Lakshmana, build for me a funeral pyre, for it is time that I should die. The heavy-hearted Lakshmana prepared to obey her, and in a silence which could be felt, a great heap of boughs was raised. Then Sita ascended the pyre, while the flames were applied and licked the base of the structure with angry tongues. But Rama was still unmoved, in spite of the anger and grief of his faithful followers. Then the gods, in pity for his human weakness, sent to these true lovers deliverance from the last anguish which was to trouble their hearts. From the unclouded heaven descended the god of purity and light in a blaze of splendor, and snatching Sita from the pyre placed her in the arms of Rama. Thou didst doubt me, my lord, she said with gentle reproach. Forgive me, my queen, he said as he folded her in his arms. The god of fire has saved me from the demon of jealousy, and now I know thee as my own, my tender love. There is no need to tell of the joyous journey to Ayodhya, for the fourteen years of exile were accomplished, of the welcome accorded to Rama and his bride, or of the golden years which followed in that happy city, freed forever from the shadow of evil by the sufferings of the conquering Rama.